Well, good day, subscribers. It has been quite a while since my last upload, but I'm back from my road trip, and finally, today is semester eight, episode one, CSE 6242, Data and Visual Analytics Final Review. So it's been almost an entire semester with barely any uploads or updates. So where have I been? Well, last semester, I decided, because I was in a fully online program and really could do my classes from anywhere, that it was the perfect opportunity to do a once-in-a-lifetime trip. So I planned a trip all across the United States to a ton of different national parks to hike and explore while continuing to finish my degree. So I left my job, signed up for two courses, this one and CS6400, database system concepts and designs, and along with my younger brother and master video editor, Michael, left to go across the country. We had so much fun exploring the US and spending so much time together. And it really was one of the huge blessings of my life to be able to do that three month trip with my brother while still finishing two courses in the OMS CS program. If you're interested in that trip and want to hear more about it, we have another YouTube channel, HBK Adventures, purely dedicated to it. So feel free to check that out after this review. Like I said, this semester, I decided to be a full-time student and take two courses, this course and CS6400, Database System Concepts and Design. A final review on that course is coming out soon as well. So if you're considering that course to be in one of your upcoming semesters, keep an eye out for that video. All right, so CSC 6242, Data and Visual Analytics. What is the course about? This course covers a lot of different material, including dealing with large data sets, that includes scraping and cleaning the data, visualizing data, and lastly, a few machine learning techniques. Now, one thing to mention about this course is even though it does cover a lot of great material, it doesn't dive super deep into any particular subject except really visualization through D3. I'll talk more about that when I'm going through the homeworks, but a good mental note to keep while going through this course is that it focuses more on quantity rather than quality of the subject. Taking a look at the grade distribution for CSE 6242, the final grade is really made up of two different things, homeworks and a project with a few bonus quizzes sprinkled in. A big note to make for this course is that it has no exams, which is really nice. So although you should watch the lectures just to learn the material and the bonus quizzes are related to the lectures, there are no tricky exams connected with the course. Now, with that said, the homeworks and the projects do make up for that. So let's take a deeper look at each one of those. Starting off the class, homework one appears the second week in the class. At least this was true for spring and fall students. This homework has five questions and, like the other homework, comes with instructions and skeleton code to help get you started. This homework is really just meant to get you started within the course. It's probably the easiest out of the four homeworks and consists of a couple of visualization questions and a few questions dealing with dirty data sets. Now, one note to make on this homework is on question three, the D3 question. D3 is probably the deepest subject, at least within the first half of the class. This D3 question is fairly easy, but make sure you understand it because homework two comes hard and it comes fast and it completely focuses on D3. For my semester, you had three weeks to complete each homework with the following homework being released the day after the previous homework was due. So sadly, in this class, no getting ahead. Like I said, homework two comes hard and it comes fast. And in my opinion, homework two is the hardest out of the four but it should be noted that I had no prior D3 experience and very little prior JavaScript experience before taking this course. The homework again consists of five questions, one of which focuses on Tableau and the other four focusing on D3. To me, this homework was really the make or break part of the course. If you can get past this one, you can complete the course. A couple of resulting visualizations for the questions can also be seen on the slide. Next, Homework three focuses on dealing with data and introduces you to a lot of cool platforms like Docker and AWS. Now, like I said before, this course doesn't really go deep into any of these subjects, but really just gives you a taste. 
I would say it's probably enough that if you wanted to continue to learn on your own, it would give you a good starting spot, but I really didn't feel like it was as much information as I would have wanted on each of these platforms. Finally, homework four, the final assignment, is only three questions and they focus on machine learning. There isn't too much to say about this one. It's in the middle of the pack in terms of difficulty and for the most part, at this point in the course, you're really more focused on the project than the homeworks. So for me, I didn't get a ton of new learning from this homework, but that may be because I've already taken a bunch of courses in machine learning and that is my chosen specialization. So now onto the project. Like I said, the project is really the second focus of the course. For the project, you're told to form your own group of four to six members and to create your own idea for the project. Now the formation of the groups is just done through Piazza and will literally blow up your Piazza field for the entire weeks where groups are being formed. The project itself has three phases, a proposal phase, a progress report phase, and a final submission phase. In the proposal phase, you're asked to submit a two-page document along with a slide deck and video that explains the project your group chose. Overall, the biggest difficulty in this phase is the literature survey where each member of the group must research three different papers and summarize how they relate to the project your group chose. Next, the progress report, phase two. This is meant to give the TAs an idea of the work your group has done since the initial proposal and how the project has changed as your group has continued to work parts of it out. It is just a four page document this time with the added bonus of a lot of the format of the progress report is very similar to the format of the final submission. So you do get to reuse a lot of the material in there. Lastly, phase three, the final submission. This part is made up of three things, a document, a poster, and the code for your actual project. The document is six pages long and like I said, is fairly similar to the progress report, but with the additional parts that your team has completed filled in. The poster is a single slide that is supposed to explain your project. Each student additionally needs to make their own three minute video based on the poster. Finally, the code for your project. This is just the code that the TA will run to check your project. In addition, you need a readme on how to run your code. For my team's project, we chose to develop a sentiment indicator for stocks that took sentiment data from multiple Reddit threads, Google trend data, and data from the NASDAQ and scored the data as positive or negative. A time series of the scored sentiment was then used with a naive Bayes analysis to predict bearish or bullish trends for different stocks. A pipeline of our system can be seen here and for our team, the project was successful. Like I said, CSE 6242 has no exams, but it does have four bonus quizzes, the top three of which are counted towards your grade. These bonus quizzes are really meant to boost your grade and can give you up to three points on your final grade. The quizzes are made up of 11 questions and are open everything. So finally, my favorite part, my thoughts on the course. CSE 6242 definitely has some good things going for it. The subject matter is overall interesting and you get to dip your toe into the waters of a lot of cool software I haven't seen in other courses. Additionally, all homeworks are graded using Gradescope, which is super helpful in any course. Though the class has a lot of ups, it definitely has some downs. The first of which is that the lectures barely sync up with the homeworks. Now I found this to be true in a couple of OMS CS courses, and it always seems to be a way for the professor to feel like they can cover more material in the course by just having the homeworks and the lectures be totally separate. But I really don't think it's a good idea. Additionally, as I've mentioned, other than D3, you really don't get a deep understanding of any subject matter. Now, one note I will make is for this course, at least half of your opinion of the course will be based off of how easy your group is to work with for the project. So who should take this course? Well, one, students who really want to learn about data visualization, and two, students who really enjoy working with groups of different software developers and enjoy project work. Now, the big question, would I take it again? And for the first time on this channel, I have to say, no, I wouldn't. Though the course had some interesting material in it, I didn't think there was anything that I wouldn't be able to teach myself if I wanted to go do it. Just like everyone in the OMS CS program, 
I'm paying to be here. So I was really expecting more from the course in terms of direction and coverage of the different material that we were going through. Now I will say, if you're looking for a second course to pair or just an easier semester, this course was easier than some of the other courses I've taken in the OMSCS program, but overall, I didn't think I would choose to take it again if I was given the option. As always, thank you all for watching and for waiting while I traveled the country. If you have any questions or comments about anything in this video, leave a comment in the comments section. Don't forget to like the video, it really helps with the algorithm, and if you're interested, don't forget to check out my other channel, HBK Adventures. Well that's it for this one, so don't forget to like, and as always, subscribe.